Hi, I would like to talk to you about a duck test for end-to-end -end secure messaging. Draft Muffet end-to-end -end secure messaging. What is this internet draft about? It's about end-to-end -end secure messaging, including end-to-end -end encrypted messaging. This is a topic which I'm sure we already understand, but my thesis is that our intuitive understandings of end-to-end -end secure messaging are no longer adequate for technical policy discussion in the modern era. What issue does this internet draft address? Well, if you want to change something, you first need to be able to measure it. But therefore, if you want something to not change, you must also likewise be able to measure it. And end-to-end -end security is something that we do not have a metric for. And there are several extant attempts to change it. For instance, there is UNICEF who, in a recent paper, discussed the benefits or otherwise of being able to intercept abusive material on end-to-end -end encrypted messengers on people's devices. Then there is GCHQ, who a few years ago published a ghost proposal in which all end-to-end -end encrypted conversations would have some silent, invisible third party uh, spliced into them in case the conversation need to be intercepted. And then there is the Indian government, which is currently pursuing a policy of message hashing, where it wants to be able to identify who was the first person to send some ostensibly abusive message through a platform such as WhatsApp. The common thread to all of these discussions is that they claim not to break end-to-end -end security. But how may we test this assertion? Well, we could look at the messenger solution and analyze what algorithms it provides, what features it provides, who the actors are that we would expect to be using it, and what we would expect those actors to want out of the system, what their expectations would be. This is the approach of draft nodal E2E definition, which is a separate internet draft, potentially complementary to this one, addressing only specifically end-to-end -end encryption and framing it in terms of these expectations. It is somewhat challenging to use this as a test, however, uh, because it's hard to resist political reinterpretation. For example, section 4.3 of the draft speaks of intended recipients for communication without saying that it is the recipients themselves who determine the intent. Perhaps law enforcement could also be spliced in as an intended re recipient uh, in one interpretation. It also speaks of formally interfering with channel confidentiality, and I don't know what that means. It also speaks of violating the expectations of security properties of, in this case, the impossibility of a third party accessing the content, but it doesn't say what the consequences of those violations would be. I would like to propose an alternative approach, which is not to see if the messenger software looks like end-to-end -end secure uh, software, but instead whether it quacks like end-to-end -end secure software. So this is why we develop a test for end-to-end -end secure messaging. Conveniently, there are three really big hints in the name which help us with this. Firstly, this is end-to-end -end secure messaging. Therefore, there are ends and we should respect them. And for the moment, we will refer to ends as being participants, which means a sender or a recipient. Secondly, we are talking about messaging, which we will define as a system where at the point of sending each individual message, the sender creates an immutable set of recipients for that message, who are the only people who are allowed to access it. This is different from other kinds of software like forums, where people in the future who join a group conversation would be able to look at retrospective historical content. Thirdly, we have a slight plot twist. We do not define recipients in terms of protocol participation. Instead, we define them in terms of outcome. A recipient is any entity which can determine one bit of plain text message content which was sent by a sender with more than 50% certainty. Why define them like this? Because then we can say if any recipient was not known or visible to the sender at the point of message composition or sending, the solution does not implement end-to-end -end security. That is the test. That's all of it. One very beneficial consequence of this simple test and simple definition is that it gives us an easy and clear definition of what a backdoor is. A backdoor would be any mechanism which leaks bits to a non-recipient, irrespective of whether it's intentional or unintentional. This obviates discussions of golden keys and law enforcement access and so forth. Law enforcement access, incidentally, may be enabled just so long as it's overt. The same goes for helper bots and compliance bots and conversation recorders and grammar correction tools and other things like that. Uh, all of these things are 
okay so long as they are participants clearly and transparently in the conversation. There are of course some nitpicks and edge cases. I'm going to go quite quickly through them for speed. Firstly, some metadata is as sensitive as content and shouldn't be exposed in plain text. Secondly, some metadata may be beyond the scope of content protection. It would be nice if everything was end-to-end -end encrypted, but not everything is, and thematic metadata is a frequent source of leaks. Thirdly, it is entirely possible to do without message encryption. This is why we talk about end-to-end -end secure messaging, because, for instance, the Ricochet Messenger doesn't bother to encrypt messages because it only delivers them peer-to-peer, point-to-point. Fourthly, there is an interesting architectural distinction between centralized and decentralized messengers. In decentralized ones, the sender chooses explicitly the recipient set and, uh, like in composing an email, defines it at the point of sending. In a centralized uh, messenger system, the frozen set is taken from a shared context amongst participants, which leads to interesting consistency and visibility questions. Fifth, participation of group chats must be closed within, but should offer means for public self-subscription if that is something which the uh, service provider wants to offer. Sixth, to state the obvious, it is entirely legitimate for old content to be quoted or cited or forwarded to new joiners and new members in the context of an existing chat. It's only that the new joiners should not by default be able to see old content. Seventh, it is necessary to require that all participants have equal access to plain text and that no participant has some manner of man in the middle access that would give them access to plain text in a way that any other participant would lack. This is necessary to resolve an issue where a platform provider might also be a participant in the conversation. And finally, end which we originally specified as being a participant or a user is actually better defined as the trusted computing base of that user there's a marvelous paper by clark and blumenthal from 2011 called the end-to-end -end argument and application design role of trust which talks about this at great length and i recommend it to everybody who's uh, interested in researching this space. But what we learn from this is that the participants trusted computing ba compute base uh, defines the scope of an end. So it is not a weakness in a messenger if Alice accesses it over remote desktop protocol. It is not a weakness in a messenger if Bob downloads a hacked app, nor is it a weakness if Carol's phone storage gets forensically analyzed at rest, or if Dave's keyboard leaks what he is typing to some upstream service. All of these should be parts of the trusted path, which the users should be demanding uh, and assuring of their own accord are appropriate for their needs. Also, I was delighted that this paper reminded me of RFC 2804 and that the IETF uh, has decided to not consider wiretap requirements as part of processes when creating standards. Uh, this is something which I believe uh, should be maintained as we evolve from a world where wiretaps in the middle on platforms were our primary concern and now where they are evolving outwards towards the end client devices. This is the end of my presentation. Going forward, I would like to call for this to be accepted as a draft RFC, work on it in order to make it more battle-tested and clearer and do some substantial refactoring, but eventually move to ship it as one of possibly several RFCs to help people uh, have more informed user choice and uh, to assist with clarity and policy discussion around end-to-end -end secure messaging and end-to-end -end encryption. The final goal being to provide people with a useful tool to decide whether or not their messenger solution or proposed change to a messenger is compliant with this RFC. Thank you very much.